since ChessBase 17 is a premier chess database uh, software, I thought I'd go over its advanced search today. So before we do that, I just want to tell you two things. Uh, I used this advanced search and I found something that really flat up the chess historian them and we'll talk about that. And also there's a very subtle and very simple, but very, very extremely effective feature in this software. And I guarantee you, you're going to love it. So we're going to check that out as well. So let's just get right into this. Let's go right to the advanced search. So if you find, use your database of choice. Mine is Mega Database 2023. So you right click, you go to search, and then you click advanced. Now you're bre greeted with these um, seven tabs, game data, annotation, position, metals, materials, maneuver, and attacks. And if you notice at the bottom, in, this, uh, in the bottom quarter of the screen, you can actually use all these tabs in conjunction with one another. So you can really, really, really refine your search and probably find some wow and crazy games you've never seen before. Now, with that said, I'm not going to go in detail over all these menus. I'm just going to go over a few of these in particular detail because some of them are obvious, like game data. Well, this is just the game data. So we're not really going to go over this. I mean, this should be more or less self-explanatory to anybody that plays chess. You just search for whatever player you want, black or white, the tournament, the rating, the year, and anything else. And um, well, it, it will, and it will return that search. The annotations, um, I think is really interesting. So I typed in brilliant already and you hit okay here. Then you go to the bottom here and click search. So why I think annotations is interesting is that, um, say if historically there was some chess language that they no longer use. I'm not, I don't know if that's the case or not, but you probably could find that, um, language. And then you could, um, well, you could, you could, um, you could, um, go and then search for that particular words and probably find some historical games. So I searched this by year cause I wanted to see what was the first instance that they show in this database that the word brilliant was used. And it appears that it was in 1848, I guess. So we click 1848, scroll this up a little bit. Uh, it's the Evans Gambit. Oh, this is heavily annotated. And I really like this a lot. The center is shaken by D5 and E5. Black King fast is toppling under a frontal assault. Oh, conceived in about 1826 by Captain W.D. Evans. This brilliant, precisely the word we're searching for, idea seeks to gain a decisive tempo for the formation of a powerful center. Imported to the continent by McDonald, this novelty had as his best protagonist, I don't know how to say that name, the impetuous Morphe, the unforgettable, and later on, Chigora and the Profound. So there you have it, folks. So let's close this out. Go check out another tab. Go to search, advance. All right, brilliant. Let's just reset this. Because again, one thing about it is when you leave a tab, Try to make, if you don't want to use nothing but say one tab, make sure no other tabs have anything active because sometimes it may have a tendency to combine those uh, advanced search tabs. So if you go to position, um, it's, it is somewhat self-explanatory, but also not quite self-explanatory. And what I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Say if you put, um, I don't know, pause here. And a rook here and a queen here. And yeah, I think this is good. Let's just put this. You don't even have to put the kings. It's not going to return this precise position, but it's going to probably return about, I think you don't need kings. It'll return positions that have these pieces only squares. All right. So let's hit OK. And we hit search. All right. So we got some games which is nice. All right, so we click this game here, the first one. As you can see, the three pawns here on these squares here, bishop, queen here, rook here, and rook here. So 
In other words, if you're trying to find particular setups, you don't have to know every single piece on the board. You can just put some pieces on the board. Pretty powerful feature, I guess. All right, let's close this. All right, so next, let's go back to search again. Go to advanced. Now, let's just reset this to make sure. Metal, metals is obvious. This is one we're not going to go through because, again, you just click whatever metal you want and hit OK and search, and it finds it with the fine game with those metals. Now, this is where I get real interested at these last three tabs. Real interesting. So, material, basically, what you see is what, how many pieces that you want to have on each side and how many minor pieces you can pick this and that's irregardless of knight or bishop and the total number of pieces on the board and then you can also pick uh like double pass and connected pawns pass pawns and that sort of thing uh opposite color bishop even bishops but now don't fret if you're not quite sure how to test this out let me show you how you can test out very easy when you see this tab and say examples you go to examples and they already have some examples ready but how you use them is that when you when you say for this example right here where it says opposite color bishops so if you notice let's see here none of these squares up top part are really filled in except for the pawn zero through eight just means it's ignoring pawns unless you change that number to something else so let's double click this so click and as you see now we got some numbers here and the pawns have been changed three to three so that means we want just three pawns one bishop for the side and one bishop for the other side and you're ignoring colors meaning that this can go either way and it's going to be opposite color bishops all right so we hit okay and now we hit search and just like that you have all these games you just click one it's going to go to the position at hand which there it is three pawns and a bishop versus a bishop it's just randomly click another one same case three pawns and a bishop versus a bishop and mind you opposite color bishops let's close that up and let's go back to the search again now let's go ahead and reset this tab make sure it's closed go to maneuvers now this is somewhat complicated but not hard to test if you really want to get into this all right so examples again you always want to go to your examples so we go to examples and uh we have all of these here yeah, they got a nice bit of examples and what the examples are going to do is going to fill in things up here to show you reading the context so really where it says lasker's double bishop sacrifice now look up here at the white box and the things over here we double click this and check it out what happens that's a that's a lasker's sacrifice the white bishop on any square that's why the little dotted lines there on any square on it on that diagonal take h7 and which h7 is a pawn with a check and then the black king which is on g8 takes h7 and is taken a bishop and then the next criteria is that a white bishop on any diagonal on any square on whatever diagonal it is to take on g7 and it is taken a pawn and the next criteria is that a black king is uh on any square that's available to take g7 and it's taking a bishop and over here you see bishop here on any square takes h7 and then check and um you have pawns here and you can also i guess it's whoever move you want it to be white black or you can say white or black move um there's other criteria you can set down here such as zoo swung trap piece deflection stalemate so on and so forth but it's really really a lot to play with so i'm just trying to go through this quick example so you can see just how this works and then you can formulate your own ideas to make this work for you all right so we click ok and now click search all right there it is we have games so right off um i noticed that the second game on record in 1911 was uh Chodomirsky versus Levin Fish ECO code DO4. So there is there you go. There is some nice trivia if you want to ask somebody about the Lasker's double bishop sacrifice. Who was the second game on record? What year and what ECO code? Uh, probably probably make uh if you had a chess part, it might make for a good cocktail trivia, if you will. So let's let the search run here really quick and we'll see how this goes. 
search is almost done. We had 90 something percent now at the bottom right. All right, so what I want to see is the number of games of this double bishop sacrifice. So right now we have 308 games out of the history since what, 1889. Um, what this tells me is that people are well aware of the double bishop sacrifice and do not want to allow it to happen to them. That's what this tells me. Because I know when I have two bishops pointing at my king like this, my defense usually don't allow for you to do a double bishop sacrifice unless you just do it in vain. So uh, anyway, so um, there's that. So if you want to search more games like that, well, there there is your example. And you can go there and formulate your own examples and just see what can you find. All righty. So let's uh, go to this. Let's close this up. Go back into search. Advance. All right, let's uh, let's reset this to make sure that's going. Let's go to attacks. Now, attacks. Now, I've already got this preset here for attacks. This is one that I thought of earlier. It was just random, but it's something about this thing. It's something about this search that's going to yield a particular result that really, you know, flared up the chess historian in me. So let me show you that. So we click OK and now click search. And if you notice, um, only let's see, yeah, only one game is going to come back from this search. And that's not really the big part. That's not really the big deal. I'm going to show you the big deal. Search is going. It's still looking. It's still looking. I've already executed this search of several times, at least on my database. Only one game is going to pop up. It's going to be this one. So, all right, first of all, this piqued my interest. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click this game and open it. This um, piqued my interest because first of all, only one game popped up, which is, uh, well, anything could happen. And my criteria was that a rook was being attacked by a rook that was protected by a queen and a bishop. So that's met. So it works as advertised. Um, Okay, so in chess spaces, I've already showed you guys that um, you can click a person's name and an ID card will pop up. So here we can see uh, Weissgerber, Gerhard Weissgerber was born in 1905 and died in 1937. Here's a picture of him and he's German. All right, so I close this and you go ahead and click Carl Pelle. Look at the picture of Carl. Carl was born in 1904 and died in 1937. So I was curious to like these two relatively, not relative, these two young people died in the same year. And, you know, it just wanted me to figure out what they died from. And I have not found anything just yet, but at least for them, it must be an honor for a person like, you know, it's a random person like me. To be looking at that picture, looking at that game, and just wondering about the not only them, you know, that chess game, but but them as well. So I've uh, done a little bit of internet searching, and what I found on this Wikipedia here, uh, Gerhard uh, Weisgerber, uh, it just talks about some some of that chess achievements, and this is all I can find so far on the internet. Say so he had a historical rating of twenty five sixty two in nineteen thirty four, and it doesn't really say anything about, you know, his death, but I'm very curious about that, being that both of these men died in the same year, and he was very strong German chess players. All right, so if you go to Carl Helling's Wikipedia, it's the same thing. Talks a little bit, it's a little bit more than what he had. It kind of talks about something, but mainly it's chess achievements, and pretty much that's it. No more, uh, nothing else. So this has compelled me to want to find out more about these two guys and not only that i really want to search their games and just see how well they are and in the midst of this i even uh found a youtube video that showed one of the one of the better games of carl helling so i'm going to watch that video you should see it you should have seen that pop up by now all right so let's close this down now 
the very last thing I want to show you in this video is this feature that I, that I know you've been waiting to learn. What is this feature? What is he talking about? All right. So if you look down at the bottom left corner of this board, you see this little green three stripes. It's a menu. I never saw it was there until, the, until a couple of days ago. So if you click it and up pops this thing. So if you just click show attackers and defenders, it just points to everything that's being attacked and things that are being defended. I mean, simple and brilliant. All right. Let's uncheck that. And we go back and check show heat map. So the heat map is really just more or less just showing like these dots are really showing like what positions pieces can move to. But what it's really going to show you is this. If you click a piece like blast black to move, um, if you click black's piece, it shows you what's green is a good move. Red is a bad move. Yellow is a wasted move. Orange is almost wasted. So again, if you go over and click the queen, everything is red. Doesn't make any sense. Click the bishop. Everything is red. The only move for black is to take the rope. And it shows you that on the heat map. All right. So we click that. Let's turn that off. Go to visual evaluation. Go to visual evaluation. What this is really showing you here is the position, the relative position of the pieces to how good they are. Okay, black has a backwards pawn that's considered bad. This pawn here is kind of stuck in the middle. That's bad. This pawn here is protecting two pawns and really has no mobility. That's bad. This pawn has no mobility. It's kind of stuck. These squares here and the kings are pretty much in the optimal squares. Everything in green is in pretty good squares. The darker the screen, the better. Also, you get to the really darkest green. It looks more like a teal. That means they're on the absolute best squares. And well, the kings are pretty safe. All right. So next, we're going to show the mobility, which is really, it's just showing you every square that any given piece can move to. This is all what this is showing you. So it's showing you that there's a lot of mobility on this board right now. Um, maybe not all of it is good, but at least there is some mobility. I hope you found this video an advanced search interesting in this uh, feature. And if you got any questions, comments, or anything else, and want to know anything else about Chess Face 17, just drop them in the comments, and we will see what we can do for you. Have a good night. Thanks.